Come on and sing it to him. He is Alpha. You are Alpha.
one, but Hallelujah. this one just says, praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. His name is Jesus. Blessed Savior. He's worthy to be praised. Can you help me say it?
God is great. God is great. God is great. And greatly to be praised. Come on, put your hands together and praise Him. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. His love is greater than ours. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Look at somebody and say, there's no love like the love of our God. Oh, come on, tell somebody, there's no love like the love of our God. Hallelujah. No one can love you like our God loves you. In the name of the Lord, hallelujah. His love is greater than ours. You may be seated in the presence of the Almighty God if you can. If you can, I understand why. Tell your neighbor it's good to see you in the house of the Lord. Come on, look at him like you mean it and say it's good to see you in the house of the Lord. In Jesus' name, God is great and greatly to be praised in the name of Jesus. We're so glad we welcome you to the sanctuary of the Great Refuge Temple of Christ. We thank God for those of you that have joined us virtually. We thank God for you being with us. And we are one church in two places, online and in person. And we are grateful for the presence of God this morning in the name of the Lord. I don't know about you, but I came to experience the presence of the Almighty God in the name of the Lord. And I'm glad that I'm experiencing the presence of the Almighty God with you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Glory to God. He's worthy to be praised. He's worthy to be glorified. He's worthy to be exalted. How many declare that you're blessed today? Blessed to be in the house. Worship one more time in the name of the Lord. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. We want to continue to be attentive to our 30 minutes of fervent prayer. We're calling fervent 30 before service. If you can get here at the 8.30, at, at 8.30 from 9 o'clock to 9 o'clock, we'll be praying together in Jesus' name. How many know that prayer works in the name of the Lord? We want you to be in Wednesday night prayer Bible study. We're going to continue our pursuit in the book of James in Jesus' name in the series that I'll continue this morning. On behave yourself in Jesus. How many are behaving yourself in the name of the Lord? Tell your neighbor, just remind them, you have to behave yourself. You have to behave yourself like our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ would. I want to apologize to those that did, couldn't get connected on YouTube. Some of you had a heart attack. Just get on Facebook, that's all. If it ain't on YouTube, get on Facebook. It ain't going to hurt. You know, your business ain't that, ain't that important. It's Bible study. Glory to God. So if you didn't get on Facebook, if it's not on YouTube, I just probably didn't hit the destination button, but it'll be on YouTube this coming Wednesday and on Facebook. So we want to continue our study in the book of James in, in Jesus' name. Fourth Sunday, which is September 24th, will be our name tag Sunday. So I hope you will come to church and won't mind wearing a name tag so that we can get to know each other by name. A unity Sunday where we'll wear red, white, and blue in Jesus' name. Glory to God. If you want to wear your pills attire, that's all right. You can do that too. It's not a requirement, but we just hope that you would in Jesus' name this coming uh, on, on this coming fourth Sunday, September 24th in Jesus' name. Just want to remind everyone that you are invited to the wearing, wedding ceremony of Minister Eric Johnson and Sister Bridget, in Jesus' name, that's this coming Friday, right, Minister Johnson? We still, uh, we, we still on? Okay, we still moving forward? Okay, just want to make sure. <laughs> At 5.30, we are all are invited to the ceremony, and the reception is invitation only. Uh, we also want to make the Women's Department of, aware that there is an upcoming refreshing hour that's going to be on a virtual platform via Zoom uh, Thursday, September 28th at 7.30. Um, Sister Tanya and Sister Deborah will be taking uh, uh, email addresses and phone numbers so that we can organize this Zoom call where you'll have some directions on next week 
on how to get logged in. And the guest speaker is Dr. Tania Michael. She is the regional coordinator uh, for the ministers and deacons' wives, but she's going to be talking to the women of Greater Refuge Temple. So we want you to be prepared for those directions. I'm just going to ask everyone, all the women, if you don't have Zoom on your phone, to go to the App Store, whether it be Android or Apple, and download the Zoom app. You may not know what to do with it, but we'll give you some direction on how to use it because we are living in a, uh, a partial virtual society. And you have to learn how to connect virtually because sometimes we can't assemble uh, together. And, you know, so be, you know, make it, make it a point to, to adapt and uh, learn some things uh, that are a little bit techy, so to speak, but we need technology. Amen. Technology kept us going during the pandemic in the name of the Lord. You may not like Mark Zuckerberg, but I, I thank God, you know, for Facebook and, and YouTube and StreamYard, you know, and so this is a way for us to stay in constant uh, communication in Jesus name. How many need a word from the Lord today in the name of the Lord? word from the almighty God that we serve in Jesus name. So we're going to go right to the word of God. I'm going to ask you to uh, stand to your feet and I have quite a, quite a bit to cover in a short period of time this morning. Glory to God and we are going to get to this word in Jesus name. I want you to go to James the second chapter we're going to uh, begin uh, at the 17th verse, if that's all right. The 17th verse of James 2, and I'm going to share uh, the scripture that shows you what James 2, 17 through 26 is trying to communicate through example. So I'm going to ask you to Put your finger in Genesis, the 22nd chapter, the book of beginnings. Everybody should be able to find that. Uh, Genesis 22. I'm not going to be before you along this morning. If I don't finish it, you know what I do. I'll pick it up on the next time around in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you. We praise you, Lord God, for this opportunity. We thank you, Lord, for your word that is a lamp unto our feet a light into our pathway. Let this be a life-changing word that will bring someone to salvation, to accept you and to know you as Lord and Savior. Lord, we bind the hand of the enemy that will bring about distractions, that will bring about unnecessary interruptions. Lord God, let our minds be focused on you. Let our hearts be panting after you. Speak to us that we'll be blessed in our spirit, soul, and body, that we won't leave here the same way we came in Jesus' name. James 22, or James 2 and 17 says these words, Even so faith, if it have not works, is dead, being alone. Yea, a man may say, Thou hast faith, and I have works, and show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. Thou believest that there is one God that thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. But wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he had offered up Isaac, his son, upon the altar? We'll stop there in Jesus' name. Tell your neighbor, behave yourself tell your neighbor faith is an action word come on tell somebody else faith is an action word now tell them take action come on tell somebody take action if you're ready to take action, just put your Bible and your phone down and just give God a praise and say, Lord, I'm ready. Take action. Faith is an action word. You're still
still, you may be seated, we're still preaching and teaching from the series Behave Yourself. And, and now James is telling the reader, he's telling those of the Israelite tribes that have been scattered abroad that, that faith with, without works is dead. We have to be mindful that, we, you know, that works, oftentimes we, we, it, it, it's dealing with labor when we talk about works. We're, we're talking about not being unproductive, but being productive. We're talking about doing something. We're talking about engaging in an activity that says that I believe God. How many know it's easy to say I believe God, but it's a little another, it's another challenge for us to show God that, that we believe what he says. How many believe God today? That means you're doing something. At least you're praying. At least you're believing God. And we have to realize that if we serve a God that is a miracle worker, if we serve a God that gives us activities and gives us responsibilities to do, that we must show him that we believe him and what his word says. So I am going to, you know, try to hurry along with this. Faith is an action word. It is a verb. You must do something. You Even when you pray, you have to have faith. How many know that you could even go through prayer and not believe one word you say? Hmm. Trying to impress God, trying to impress other people. But when I pray, I want to believe that God is hearing and that God is answering. The reason why I pray is because I have faith. I have not seen God face to face. Have any of you seen God face to face? You wouldn't be able to handle it, but we believe God is there. How many believe he's there? How many believe he's everywhere? He's an omnipresent God. The reason why I pray to God, because on his record, he has come through in my past. I, can, I have a testimony that he has never failed me yet. He has never let me down, but anytime he asks me to do something and I do it, how many know that you get blessed when you follow God's instructions? Well, we find that, 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 that James says, you know, he talks about work. He says, but wilt thou know, O vain man, O vain man. He's saying, O empty man, O man that is void of truth. A man that is void or destitute of spiritual wealth. A man that is unproductive. A man that is unfruitful. Let me include the women. A woman that is unfruitful. A woman that is unproductive. A woman that is lacking truth. A woman that is destitute of spiritual wealth wealth, human beings that are just vain. How many of we have some vain people? They're just empty. And we find that he warns the vain man. And he tells the vain man that without works, without faith, your works are dead. Faith without works is dead. And then he gives a biblical example that I'm going to pause at this morning. And all of us you know, at some point have been exposed to the story of Abraham and Isaac. And Isaac was a special son because he was born of a Hebrew mother, Sarah. He wasn't supposed to be born because Sarah and Abraham were in their their seasoned years. They were in their 90s in the name of the Lord. And we know that 90-year-old people just don't have children. You know, 90-year-old people don't produce. They're pretty much, it's, you know, it's said and done. You know, there's no childbearing. There is no, uh, you know, uh, birth taking place there in the natural. And we know that Sarah laughed at God. So we know that when Isaac came, we know that he was a miracle from the Lord. And we find that that when sometimes when God is, is, is in our lives, he wants to know how much faith that we have in him. Now, let me tell you this. God will never tempt man, even though this scripture opens up with the, God tempted Abraham, but he really wasn't tempting him in the way that we know temptation. He was trying him. He was testing him. How many know that God will test you at times? He will never entice you, but he will test you. We don't serve a God that cuts deals. Glory to God. We serve a God that every now and then he will test our faith. Sometimes that faith will be tested on our job. Yeah. Let the church say amen. The, 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 the test will come forth in, in the neighborhood. The, you know, the test will, will come forth in your relationships, in your marriage, in your parenting. Your, you know, testing can come in any way. And God wants to know how much you believe. 
So we find that 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 in if I can just you know flip into the Old Testament and go to the book of Genesis, we find that Lord God, we find the story, we find the event of. Of, of Abraham and Isaac. I'm going to read some of it to you this morning. I'm going to go through it quickly, but I just want you to stay with me. We have to realize, once again, that works, works. We don't get, we're not saved by works, but works count. Let me say that again. We are not saved by works, but, but works count. You know, when we stand before God, you know, we, we want the Lord to say, well done, thy good and faithful servant. A servant does stuff, if I could put it that way. A servant has spiritual activity in their lives. A servant wants to be used by the Lord. A servant wants to impress God more than they want to impress people. A servant wants God to be pleased with their lives. A servant serves other people. So we find, glory to God, in the 22nd or the 22nd chapter of Genesis, it said it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham. God did test Abraham and said unto him, Abram, Abraham, and he said, behold, here am I. This is where it begins. This is where it begins. Works, works. Everybody say works. Oh, glory to God. So there's a few things that, that Abraham had to do to show works. First, he had to answer God. Oh, glory to God. He had to answer God. God has given some of you directives. God has given some of you your purpose. God has given you, he's laid out the plan for your life. There's some things that God told you to do this week that you didn't do. So the first thing when it comes to works, we have to answer God. We have to answer God and we have to make a decision how we're going to respond. Because we either tell God no or yes. If it's in between, you've told him no. Let me say it again. We either say to God yes or no. But if you say maybe, you've told God no. If your opinion gets in it, you've told God no. If you said, God, I'll wait till my birthday, you've told him no. If you said, God, I'll wait till Christmas, you've told him no. You either tell God yes or you tell him no. So we find out that, that, that he answers God and then he says, and he said, take now thy son, thine only son, Isaac, whom thou lovest and get thee into the land of Moriah and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains which I will tell thee of. And most of us just keep reading and don't really pay attention to what God said. So he gives him instructions. Take your son and prepare him for a sacrifice. Now some of us, you know, we, we, we're real deep with God, so we, you know, but, you know, some of us that are really true with ourselves and we talk to God, you know, the way that we feel, you know, Lord, really, you know, my only son, take my only son, Isaac, and sacrifice him, and you're telling me the land where to go to make this sacrifice? Third verse says, and Abraham rose up early in the morning and saddled his ass and took two of his young men with him and Isaac his son and clave or separated the wood for the burnt offering and rose up and went unto the place of which God had told him. Then on the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar off. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, wherever Abraham was, when, he, when it was time for him to go to Moriah, it took him three days to get there. That's a whole lot of thinking. That's a whole lot of pondering. That's a whole lot of trying to digest what God is trying to do. Has anybody ever been there? You're trying to figure out, Lord, what are you trying to teach me through this? Lord, you've never let me down before. I know you won't let me down this time, but this is some brand new testing. How many know that when you pass one test, the Lord will cause you to graduate? Oh, uh, glory to God. Some of you might say, why am I taking the same test over and over and over and over again? Because you failed it. And the Lord is saying, you got to do it again. We give God thanks. We give God praise on this Sunday morning that he is a God that will give us a do-over. Glory to God. Well, let me say something. If he gives you a do-over, get it right this time so that you can graduate to the next level of testing. Because when you pass that test, the glory of God continues to be revealed in your life. Well, the Bible goes on to say, after the third day, after thinking, could you imagine what was going through Abraham's mind? How in the world am I going to do this? How am I going to kill my own son? Matter of fact, I'm showing the boy the wood. I'm showing the, the boy the way that I'm going to light this fire. But he thinks I'm going to sacrifice an animal. How am I 
I going to explain this to him? The Bible goes on to say that, And Abraham said unto his young men, Abide ye here with the ass, and I and the lad will go yonder and worship and come again to you. Oh, glory to God. Many people miss this. You know, I know that Abraham is not really qualified or many people don't put him in the category of being a prophet, but it sounds like he was prophesying. He said, he told the men that were with him to wait here and we will come again. But the coming again is not going to take place until he does the work. How many know that sometimes God can't move until you do the work? Oh, glory to God. Let me say it again. God can't move until you do the work. God can't move until he sees you doing something that doesn't make sense, that goes against the odds, that says, I have the faith to believe, because without faith, it is impossible to please God. Listen to what the Hebrew writer is saying. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. But he that cometh to God must believe that he is. He, we must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that do what? Diligently seek him. I imagine for three days, Abraham was seeking God. Abraham was saying, Lord, how in the world am I going to do this? Well, the Bible says he, he, he prophesies because he says, I'm going to leave you all here. I'm going with the lad. We're going to go yonder. We're going to worship and then come again to you. But he's supposed to slay his son. What was Abraham saying? His, his verbiage, his wording was saying, I believe God. His, his actions were saying, I believe God. The very fact that he made the journey to Moriah said that he believed God. And then the Bible says, and Abraham said unto the young men, abide here. Sixth verse says, and Abraham took the wood and the burnt offering and laid it upon Isaac his son and took the fire in his hand and a knife and then went both of them together. He took his son. He took the wood. He took the knife. Glory to God. Meaning that he was going to do what God asked him. Let me pause here. Are you doing what God has asked you to do? Or are we doing what we want to do? I want to, I, want to, I want to say this to you. We don't serve a God of common sense. Because some of the things he makes us go through is not common. Some of us have been through, how many have been through some things that it just didn't make sense? And then when God brought you through it, and you were able to say, Lord, I know why you were trying to teach me this way. So he did everything that was necessary. He was letting the two men know that me and my son will return. And the Bible says, and Isaac spake unto Abraham his father and said, my father. And he said, here am I, my son. And he said, behold the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? Me and Rob the Third are going to Mount Moriah. I see the wood. I see the fire. But where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Where is the lamb? The boy can't figure out what dad is trying to do. Most of the time, our kids don't know what we're doing. He's trying to figure out, he's trying to make this add up. But it's not adding up, so he begins to ask questions. But Abraham is still in pursuit to please God, even though what God has asked him to do doesn't make sense. And the Bible says, he speaks to his dad. Where is the lamb? And Abraham said, my son, glory to God, I'm almost done this morning. God will provide. Let me go back to this list just again. He had to answer God. He had to follow God's instruction. And he had to worship God no matter what. Mm. How many know that sometimes when we're going through a test, our worship life shuts down. Our prayer life will shut down. 
will say, what's the use? I'm praying, I'm praising God, I'm worshiping God, and nothing is happening. But there is a child of God that says, no matter what I'm going through, today I'm going to get God's attention. Today I'm going to call on the name of the Lord. Today I'm going to open up the Bible and see what God has to say to me, no matter what. Today I'm going to get an intimate conversation with God because I'm going through a test and I don't know what I'm going to do, but I might as well talk to the God that is in charge of the test. You ought to praise him right now. That's the reason why we pray, because we talk to the God that is in charge of our situation. He is in charge of the dilemmas that we face. He's in charge of those things that we go through that we don't understand. Is anybody in a situation that you don't understand? I dare you to start praising God where you are right now. I dare you to start worshiping God where you are right now, because I declare that when you worship God, this side of the cross, worship is a two-directional conversation. It's God talking to you. It's you talking to God. It's God ministering to you. It's you ministering to God. And the Bible lets us know that Abraham didn't change his desire to worship because he faced something that was bigger than him. And then the Bible says, and Abraham said, my son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they went both of them together. And I imagine the boy had to say, look, I don't understand, Dad, why you come to the sacrifice to prepare the sacrifice when no animal was sacrificed. That doesn't make sense. But the Bible lets us know that even in the questioning of his son, that it didn't change his mind about God's instructions. I want you to say, I want to say this to a few people. If God tells you to do it, it's never to make you fail. It's never to leave you. It's never to, God will never tell you to do something that will embarrass you. Oh, you ought to praise the Lord in here. God will never tell you to do, let me tell you, if he tells you to do it and you do it, he gets the glory. See, many times we think we get, you know, God gets the glory just through a song. God gets the glory just through a selection. God gets the glory just when we're clapping our hands and rejoicing. Let me tell you, sometimes you can look like you're praising God, look like you're worshiping God like some of y'all did this morning. Just went through, you know, this is what we do at 9 o'clock on Sunday. <clears throat> we're thinking about God. We're just standing there. But you can look like you're giving him glory, but you ain't giving him no glory at all. The greatest glory that we give God is obedience. And obedience requires work. Obedience is not always easy. Let the church say amen. Obedience is not always straightforward, but we do it anyhow because we know that God has given us this directive. Glory to God as I hurry along. You know, my, my, my encouragement to you is to worship no matter what. If I backpedal just a w- little bit, prophesy your outcome. Oh, glory to God. Y'all didn't hear me. That went right over your head. Prophesy your outcome. That's right. According to your obedience to God, this is what is going to take place. Abraham said, I'm going to prophesy my outcome. I'm going to leave these boys here that rode up here with me and my son. But we're coming back after we worship. Tell your neighbor, prophesy your outcome. Oh, let me tell you, the Lord has given me this right now. See, part of prayer, you have to prophesy what you want. You have to prophesy what you see through not the, not your natural eyes, but what you see through your spiritual eyes, and you have to prophesy your outcome. It sounds like this, Lord, I'm sick, but Lord, I see beyond my sickness, and I see that I am healed. Oh, glory to God, children running buck wild, but Lord, I see beyond the situation, and I see you doing something miraculous in that child's life. Tell your neighbor, prophesy your outcome. Oh, I'm going to preach that right now. I'm going to preach it in the name of the Lord. I'm going to make it a a separate message. You have to learn how to prophesy your outcome. You can't be stuck in what is. You got to be looking forward to what's coming to you because God is not through with you 
yet. Tell your neighbor, prophesy your outcome. Oh, glory to God. I believe in my last 10 minutes, glory to God, that, that somebody, glory to God, is going to transition to the other side of this. You have to realize that there is an other side of your test. There's an other side of your storm. There is an other side of your dilemma. There's an other, other side of tribulation. You will not remain stuck in the mud, glory to God. You will not remain with your spiritual tires spinning and not going anywhere. But if you respond to the of the almighty God God is saying that I will come through because I, will, I believe I'm preaching to at least five people that have something on their record that says God has brought me out before and he will bring me out Oh, glory to God. I got a few people in here. Y'all ready? Y'all ready? Let me say it one more time. There is some things in your past that said that you should have been lost. But when you look at yourself in the mirror this morning, you said, I'm not lost, but I'm found. But there was a time. I thought I wasn't going to make it, but the Lord, for some reason, in his compassion, in his grace, in his love, in his mercy, he brought me out of it. As I hasten along, the Bible says, and they came to the place. They came to the place God told him of. God told him of. He had to go to the place. He had to bring his son to the place. And Abraham built an altar there. He built an altar. He's building the altar where he's going to sacrifice his son. This almost seemed like torture. He said, take him to the place. Now build the altar that you're going to lay the son on. You've got to light the fire to sacrifice him. And the Bible says he laid the wood in order and bound Isaac, tied his son up. Now, some of you know, you know, you know, we we question how old Isaac was. Could, could have been he could have been anywhere from four to to twelve years old because he was called a lad. He was called a boy in this in this scripture. And the Bible says that Isaac, his son, laid him on the altar upon the wood. Now we don't see any resistance from Isaac. We don't see Isaac fighting his father. We don't see him saying, "Daddy, stop it." We don't say, "Daddy, quit it." Dad, what are you doing? What are you trying to do? But the Bible says, and Abraham stretched forth. And took the knife to, to, to slay or to kill his son. Somebody say, faith is an action word. Who would you have done, Minister Simmons? What would I have done if we was in that position? I mean, the deep folks will say, oh, I would have just followed God. What would you have done? But this man took the knife, raised the knife to kill his son. Faith without works is dead. The Bible goes on to say, and the angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven. How many know that in your dilemma, the Lord will send you an angel? And said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, here it is again. Here am I. And he said, lay not thine hand upon the land. Neither do thou anything unto him. For now I know that thou fearest God. Abraham must have gasped. He said, Lord, I knew you would come through. Anybody ever been there? Lord, I knew you would come through. Yeah, it felt like the odds were against me. felt like the bottom was going to fall out. But the Lord told him to do no harm to his son. He said, for now I know that thou fearest God. See, thou hast not withheld thy son, thy only son from me. Don't hold anything from God. There is nothing, glory to God, that's more valuable than God. We have to know that in Abraham lifted up his eyes, he looked and behold, behind him. The Bible says he, behind him was a ram caught in the thicket, caught in the bushes 
by his horns. Oh, you ought to praise the Lord in here. I want to tell somebody right now, you have a ram that is caught in the thicket. You have an unexpected blessing. Glory to God. And some of us are looking forward, but the Bible says that the ram was behind him. And we have to realize that your blessings are sometimes just caught in the thicket. And the Lord is saying, I'm setting you up for the next blessing. I know that it will be unconventional. I know it won't be the way you expected it. But when I come through, you'll know that it was me. So you might as well release your faith to God right now. No matter how difficult it may be, know that your ram is caught in the thicket. And the Bible says, and he offered up him up for a burnt offering in the stead of his son. I'm going to close here. Tell somebody faith is an action word. Oh, glory to God. Tell your neighbor, it's time to take action. It's time to believe God when it doesn't make sense. It's time to get your hands involved. Because when you need a miracle from God, you need God to get in your business. Oh, you ought to praise him right now. Tell the, Lift your hand to the Lord right now and say, Lord, if you sent the test, you got to get in my business. The Bible says, and Abraham called the name, the place. Oh, glory to God. Y'all didn't know where this was in the Bible, but here's where it is. He called the place Jehovah Jireh. Come on, tell your neighbor, there's a place called Jehovah Jireh. Oh, glory to God. And that place is not segregated to a day. It's not segregated to a location. It's not confined, glory to God, to a denomination. It's not confined with how spiritual you are. But there's a place called Jehovah Jireh. Glory to God. And in that place, there is provision that no man on the earth can make for you. In that place, there is provision where no woman can make Make the answer for you. But in that place, it's where God provides to the believer that will work on his behalf. Can somebody give God the praise and say there's a place where God will provide. There is a place where God will move mountains. There is a place where God will fix the unfixable. There is a place, there is a place where God will make a way out of no way. How many believe in that place? It's called Jehovah Jireh. And the Bible says, as he said to this day, in the mount of the Lord, it shall be seen. Oh, you ought to praise the Lord right now because the blessing that God has for you is not going to be done in a corner, Sister Geneva. It's not going to be done in the shadows. It's not going to be done behind closed doors or a brick wall. But when the Lord allows you to experience that place, he said it's going to be seen. Oh, glory to God. Oh, you ought to praise the Lord. It's all right every now and then to say, Lord, show me something. Show me a glimpse of your glory. Show me, God, that you haven't given up on me. Show me, God, that I'm not by myself. Show me, God, that you are a God of the turnaround. You are a God of the breakdown. You are a God that will take situations that nobody can get me out of. Glory to God. Give God a praise and declare that your blessings will be seen. Oh, give God some praise in this place. And the Bible says, oh, glory to God, and the angel of the Lord called unto Abraham out of heaven the second time and said, by myself have I sworn, saith the Lord, for because thou hast done this thing, Oh, glory to God. Tell your neighbor, do that thing in the name of the Lord. Not your thing, but do the God thing. Oh, glory to God. Tell your neighbor, do that thing. And the Bible lets us know, and has thou not withheld thy son, thy only son, that in blessing, oh, glory to God. I promise you, I'm going to stop on this scripture. Y'all go back and study. Glory to God, those last few verses of James 2. But I declare I'm stopping here because the 17th verse is the closer for this morning. It says, that in blessing, I will bless thee. That in blessing, I will bless thee. Glory to God. Tell your neighbor, that's a promise of God to those 
those that will have faith that has works. In blessing, I will bless thee. Oh, glory to God. How many know you have a blessing coming? You have an incredible blessing coming. You have an awesome blessing coming. But the Lord said, I'm not just going to bless you any ordinary way. He said, and in multiplying, uh, we serve a God of multiplication. Uh, we serve a God of addition. We serve a God of exponential blessing. He is not just going to give you a blessing, but tell your neighbor, I got blessings coming. Oh, glory to God. You can have a blessing, but I'd rather have blessings. Oh, glory to God. In every dimension of my life, in blessing, I will bless thee. And in multiplying, I will multiply thy seed. Oh, glory to God. Help me, Jesus. I want my faith to go to the next level. I will multiply my seed as the stars of heaven. Oh, glory to God. The next time you look up in the sky and it's dark and you see the stars. Oh, glory to God. That represents the blessing of God. He's a God of blessing. He's a God of multiplying your seed. And as the sand which is upon the seashore. Oh glory. Can y'all see it? Anybody been to the beach? Oh glory to God. Sanctified folks don't go to the beach in the name of the Lord. But have you been to the beach? Glory to God. That's one place. I don't love fresh water beaches. They nasty. But it's something about a salt water beach. Oh glory to God. It's something about the way the sand feels. And when you lift up the sand and you put it in your hand, you can never determine how many grains of sand. Oh, glory to God. I know, Missionary Jazzy, you love the beach in the name of the Lord. But when you put that sand in your hand, there's nowhere that you can determine how many grains of sand is in your hand. Oh, glory. That's the way that God blesses us. He is a God of inexhaustible blessings. He'll bless you in your spirit. He'll bless you in your soul. He'll bless you in your body. But you must answer God. You must follow his instructions. You must worship him no matter what. You must prophesy your outcome. You must trust in God's Provision, But the Bible says, and thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemies. And in thy seed shall all nations of the earth be blessed. Because thou hast obeyed my voice. Oh, glory to God. The reason why the believer is blessed, because you obey the voice voice of God even when it goes against your grain I'm done in the name of the Lord even when it goes against glory to God how you gonna look God blesses those that obey his voice give God a praise and shame the devil and tell God I'm gonna obey your voice because you are a God that has put me in the storm. You've allowed me to go through the test, but Lord you have not given up on me so I'm not going to give up on you. I trust in your provision. I believe that you're going to take me to the place called Jehovah Jireh. If you know that God is a provider, give him some praise right now and prophesy your outcome. It sounds like this. My husband ain't saved, but he's speaking in tongues. My wife ain't saved, but she's speaking in tongues. I don't know how I'm going to make ends meet, but I see myself making six figures. Prophesy your outcome. I'm dry. I'm riding a bike, but prophesy I'm going to get my license and drive a car in the name of the Lord of God. Prophesy your outcome. I'm working for somebody, but I want to be an entrepreneur. Prophesy your outcome. I ain't got a dollar in the bank, but when I get a dollar, I'm going to give God ten cents and give an offering. Prophesy your outcome because God is going to make a way because you made a decision. I'm going to use my hands. I'm going to use my 
speak. I'm going to use my voice. Faith without works is dead. Show me faith without works. And I'll show you my faith with works. Tell your neighbor you're going to see something. Because I believe God. Tell your neighbor you're going to see a miracle. Because I believe that I need to listen to the voice of the Almighty God. If you believe it, put a praise in the atmosphere and declare that faith is an action word. Tell your neighbor, take action. Tell your neighbor, take action. He will bless you. Take action. And he will multiply you. Take action. And he will provide for you. Take action. And he will cover you. Take action. And he will supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory. Take action. Take action. Take action. If you believe it, shout yes. If you believe it, shout yes. Wave to your neighbor and say, take action. Take action. Listen to the voice of God. My multiply. Time is coming. My blessings are coming. God is releasing His glory. But you gotta take action. If you believe it, tell ya.
somebody that needs salvation this morning, I want you to come to this altar without hesitation. You need to re 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 reconnect your relationship with God. You walked away from him, but he didn't walk away from you. I want you to come right now. I mean, your relationship with God, you severed it, but God wants you back. You may not have accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, but I tell you right now, he laid down his life for you. He shed his blood for you. He gave you the opportunity to turn away from your old man in repentance and be baptized in his name for the remission of sin. He died on the cross for you. He shed his blood for your forgiveness. He shed his blood for your healing. He shed his blood for your, rest your restoration. He shed his blood for your deliverance. taking place in diverse places. Floods are taking place at a dimension that haven't taken place in a century. Lives being swept away. Homes being swept away. Businesses being swept away. Not expecting it, but it gives us a picture. It gives us an image. It gives us an illustration of what it's going to be like when the Lord comes back. There will be people that are trying to get themselves together at that moment. How many know you can't get yourself together? You ain't got enough sense to get yourself together. I didn't have enough sense to get myself together. But Jesus will help you get yourself together. I want, to know, I want you to know he's available to save your soul. But it starts with a heart that is willing to ask the Lord for forgiveness that is willing to repent. Those of you listening online, you can repent right, right where you are right now. You can be baptized in Jesus' name if you have a desire to do so. The pool is ready if you haven't been baptized in Jesus' name. Come now. Not next week, not on your birthday, not at Christmas, not at Resurrection Sunday, but come now. We're offering the plan of salvation. So glad to see so many of you in the house of the Lord this morning. I'm excited at what God has ahead. Receive this word. Please don't let this word flee your heart. Go back and read the entire chapter of Genesis 22. Put it together with the last few verses of James 2. I believe it's the 17th to the 26th verse. Read those verses. See how they come together. Faith without works is dead. You got to show God that you believe. We have faith because we're willing to act on the word of God. Abraham had to respond to God's command. He had to get moving, even though God told him to slay his son. He prophesied his outcome in the midst of the odds being against him. I don't know why I'm stuck there. Prophesy your outcome. Speak it. Speak it until you have the faith to believe what you say. I'm getting ready to speak some things before 12 midnight tonight. I'm going to prophesy my outcome. I want to prophesy the outcome of Greater Refuge Temple when the last, when the last song is sung and flung in this church, the last message is preached, and when the Lord decides to come back, I want to prophesy the outcome that we were prepared to meet Jesus Christ, that we offer Jesus Christ, that we preach the gospel of Jesus Christ, that we preach that he's coming back again. 
your neighbor prophesy your outcome. Come on, put your hands together and give God a praise in this place. Somebody needed this word this morning. I needed it. Let's remember I preached to myself as well as I'm preaching to you. Faith is an action word. Tell your neighbor one more time, take action. Come on, tell somebody, take action. Oh, glory to God. At this time, we are preparing to worship the Lord in our giving. I want you to be diligent. I want you to be faithful. I want you to be generous. I want you to be bountiful. For God loveth the cheerful giver. 2 Corinthians 2 and 9. Hallelujah. We want to take care of the house of God. We want to take care of the business of the kingdom. In Jesus' name. I'm going to ask those of you that would, would, would you prepare your tithe, prepare your offering. Those that are listening online, you can click on that PayPal link and sow with us. Or you can log on to Givelify.com as well as grtchurch.org and click on the the uh, box that says giving and uh, you can do so let's do this as unto the Lord whether it be on your iPhone, whether it be on your iPad, your tablet, let's do this together in Jesus name fervently respectfully as unto the Lord we're not getting the ministry of giving in the way and out of the way, we're getting it in the way because we know that it's God's word to be a sower, to be a giver if you sown seed, you have a right to expect the harvest. Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, is the Lord of the harvest. And those of you that have not been giving, your, your pastor is respectfully asking you to sow in Jesus' name. We need to sow to grow. Glory to God. We need to sow in order to keep the ministry moving forward in a positive direction in Jesus' name. God has blessed us this far. I want you to finish your your commanded blessing seed to be completed by November uh, 30th of this year in Jesus' name. And we want you to be faithful in doing that. Has God been good to you? Amen. Remember that the place that the Lord provided the ram in the thicket, he provided the sacrifice in place of his son, of Abraham's son, Isaac, and it was called Jehovah Jireh. And I believe all of us can say that God has been an awesome provider, hasn't he? Come on, if God has provided for you, just somebody shout hallelujah. Oh, come on, you can do better than that. Shout hallelujah. Glory to God. Let us do this as unto the Lord in Jesus' name. We're going to ask everyone to come after I pray and give our giving declaration. Touch the, touch the bucket before me your phone, if your tab, with your tablet, even with your, with your hand, if you're giving electronically or you can put your tithe and offering in the bucket if you're using one of these envelopes. If you need one of these envelopes, come now. Come now in the name of the Lord so we can do this all together in Jesus' name. Let's do this as unto the Lord in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Stand with me. Everything you have belongs to God. We're just giving back a portion in our tithe and our offering a portion of what God has given to us. My prayer is that all of your needs are supplied. As the psalmist said, delight yourself in the Lord and he will give thee the desires of thine heart. We want God's to be, will to be done in our ministry. We want God's will to be done in your family. We want God to bless you in your spirit, soul, and body. Remember that the return of God is not always in dollars and cents. But how many know that you can't pay for a spiritual blessing? Glory to God. You can't, you, can't, you can't pay for a spiritual breakthrough. In Jesus' name, hallelujah, glory to God. Let us bow our heads and humble our hearts before the Lord. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we come before you. We thank you, God, for this day. Thank you, Lord, for this moment in time where we're sowing, we're giving as unto you. You said that you love a cheerful giver, a bountiful giver, a hilarious giver. We give because, Lord God, we know, Lord God, that you have blessed us. You have supplied all of our need according to your riches and glory. And we can't pay for good health. We can't pay for a sound mind. We can't pay for spiritual strength. 
We thank you for the tangible blessings that you have given to us. There's someone that's seeking your face that has been giving, that needs an answer right now. I'm asking you to release it. Give them a testimony, Lord God. Bless them we'll be able to move forward to reach souls far and near. We give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. In Jesus' name, let the church say, amen. Repeat after me. This is my tithe. I give it as an expression of my covenant with God. It is a reflection of my love, honor, and obedience. I declare that the windows of heaven are open and blessings will flow in my life. I will never be broke. I reject poverty. I embrace prosperity. I thank God. I am a tither. I thank God. I am a giver. Let's do it as unto the Lord. In Jesus' name, everyone walk from all over the sanctuary. We ask that you would stay until the benediction. We'll be leaving the sanctuary in the next few moments. Let's do this as unto the Lord. Everyone walk. So no one has to walk over you. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. The Lord is so good. Thank you, Greater Refuge Temple, for your kindness, for your generosity, for your care, for the ministry. We thank God and those of you that are listening online. We ask that you would sow every Sunday along with us. You can sow throughout the week. We thank God for those of you that drop your tithe and offering off to the church and those of you that mail them in. In the name of the Lord, we bless God today. A blessing is coming to your house in the name of Jesus. until the end of the service in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. We're about to leave the sanctuary but not the presence of the Almighty God. In the name of the Lord, stand to your feet with me in the name of the Lord. And this is one of those Sundays where I got to rush out of here. It's not that I don't want to fellowship with you but I'll catch up with you on next week in the name of the Lord. God has given me an assignment until he says so. I'm going to keep that assignment. Glory to God and we have, I'm ministering in another place during the uh, in another church during this uh, during this time in which we live. But God is giving us His favor, and I'm just going to once again ask you to pray for me. I want you to know, Greater Refuge Temple, I love you. I count it a privilege and an honor to be your pastor, to be your teacher. And we, we're going to continue to move forward. The blessings of God are going to continue to flow on our lives. Continue to pray for my family, for me and uh, First Lady. Sanders, in Jesus' name, that the glory of God will be revealed in our lives. In the name of how many are glad you came to church today? Oh, glory to God. I'm glad. Now do this. Bring somebody with you next week. Invite someone to the house of God. Invite a friend, invite a neighbor, invite a co-worker. In Jesus' name. Everyone has an assignment. You gotta witness to at least one person this week. Now let me tell you, let me tell you what the rules are. Not indirect witnessing, direct, which means that you open up the conversation. If it ain't nothing but telling somebody that Jesus loves you, see where it goes from there. Amen? Everyone has an assignment. I'm gonna, and I'm going to add a person every week. Come on. One person this week that you start a conversation with about Christ. How many will do that with me? Come on. Come on. It's an opportunity. Every person. I believe our church will grow, but we need evangelism to come out of the pews, not just the evangelism ministry. Everyone has an assignment this week to share Christ with one person. Not a person that you know is saved, a person that you may not know at all. Start a conversation with them about Jesus Christ. Amen? Talk to somebody about Jesus in the name of the Lord. We've preached, we've prayed, we've done praise and worship offered the plan of salvation. Glory to God. We fellowship with one another. I believe that God is pleased. Repeat after me. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. 
O Lord, my strength, my redeemer. In Jesus' name, let the church say amen. Tell your neighbor, have an incredibly blessed week. Have an incredibly blessed week.